President Obama has 15 advisors who fill his cabinet. But as we're learning, they may be the most ineffective group ever assembled by our president in our nation's history. The reason? Because he has 37 czars to oversee and advise him directly on matters ranging from population control to globalism and localism. These are all serious issues, in the president's own words, will fundamentally change America. Watch this. What's the danger of czars and other special advisors? Never before have there been so many executive posts that were not confirmed by Congress and who answered only to the president. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. While most of the criticism has come from conservatives dedicated to small government, transparency, and the Constitution, Democratic Senator Robert Byrd came out against these czars back when there were just a third as many czars as there are now. Back in February, he wrote a letter to Obama, quote, The rapid and easy accumulation of power by the White House staff can threaten the constitutional system of checks and balances, end quote. That is absolutely what is at stake here. And Senator Byrd, a Democrat, is right to point out that a growing executive threatens the legislative branch. But Byrd is wrong when he says, quote, at worst, the White House staff has taken direction and control of programmatic areas that are the statutory responsibility of Senate-confirmed officials. No. At worst, you have the czar's radical ideas turning into policy, particularly in the realms of science and bioethics. When you hear the president's words... The truth is that promoting science isn't just about providing resources. It's about protecting free and open inquiry. It's about ensuring that facts and evidence are never twisted or obscured by politics or ideology. And compare them to the men and women he's made into advisors and czars. Do you really believe he's picking people who aren't pushing an ideology? Or just not pushing one that he disagrees with? Let's start with Obama's science czar, John Holdren. In 1977, he co-authored a book with environmental activists Paul and Ann Ehrlich called Eco-science, which suggested our Constitution would permit forced abortions, quote, if the population crisis became sufficiently severe to endanger the society. Eco-science also advocates spiking drinking water with chemicals to make people sterile, though the authors caution that it would, quote, have to meet some rather stiff requirements, and it must be uniformly effective despite widely varying doses received by individuals. Yet Holdren's radical ideas are not limited to his views on depopulation from the 1970s. In order to fight global warming, Holdren said earlier this year that he believes things are so bad that he's not even willing to take this drastic measure off the table. There are a variety of schemes that have been discussed for geoengineering. A classic example is uh, injecting reflecting particles into Earth orbit that would uh, deflect some of the sunlight that would otherwise be warming the earth and in that way try to produce a cooling effect to offset the heating effect of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. That idea has been likened to creating a massive volcanic eruption which some scientists have theorized killed the dinosaurs. Then there's the matter of bioethics. Two men who have the president's ear have thought about running government's health care policy with cost-benefit analysis. Regulatory czar Cass Sunstein wrote, quote, If a program would prevent 50 deaths of people who are 20, should it be treated the same way as a program that would prevent 50 deaths of people who are 70? Other things being equal, a program that protects young people seems far better than the one that protects old people because it delivers greater benefits. And Obama's health policy advisor, Ezekiel Emanuel, who is also Rahm Emanuel's brother, wrote, quote, Conversely, services provided to individuals who are irreversibly prevented from being or becoming participating citizens are not basic and should not be guaranteed. And remember what President Obama said during the campaign. On economic policy, I associate with Warren Buffett and former Fed Chairman uh, Paul Volcker. If I'm interested in figuring out my foreign policy, I associate myself with my running mate Joe Biden or with... Dick Lugar, the Republican ranking member on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, or General Jim Jones, the former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. Those are the people, Democrats and Republicans, who have shaped my ideas 
and who will be surrounding me in the White House. Knowing that people like Emanuel, Holdren, Sunstein, former black nationalist avowed communist, Van Jones, and dozens of others will surround Obama and shape his ideas should give anyone pause. And that is the true danger in these czars.